First, I'd like you to take a moment and try a little puzzle practice. Push pause on the video, try these four puzzles, and then play again when you're ready to check your work. Next, after you've checked your puzzles, it's going to be time for us to do some factoring by splitting the middle term. And so we'll be doing these little puzzles in each of the problems that we solve together. Let's tackle the first factoring problem. 3x squared minus 4x plus 1. All right, so first we need to figure out what's the puzzle. So I look at the 3 and the 1, and that tells me I'm looking for a number that multiplies to make 3 and adds to make negative 4. Well, there aren't a lot of things that multiply to make 3. So 3 times 1 would give me 3, and 3 plus 1 is 4. So that's almost right. I need the negative 4 instead of the positive 4. Well, if I multiply two negative numbers together, I still get a positive number. So that could work. And if I add those together, notice I do get a negative 4. So I need negative 3 and negative 1. Those are the numbers I can use to split the middle term. So I'm going to start by keeping my 3x squared. Then I'm going to split negative 4x into negative 3x, excuse me, and negative 1x. And then I'm going to bring down the plus 1 at the end. All right, so now I need to look at the first two terms and adding in the last two terms. So for the first two terms, 3x squared and negative 3x, I can see that they're both divisible by 3, and they both include at least 1x. The top one would need to be multiplied by x to get back to 3x squared, and the bottom would need to be multiplied mm, by just a negative 1. That's the only thing it needs. So 3x is what they have in common, leaving behind x minus 1, and then I'm ready to look at the next pair of terms. So I've got a negative 1x and a positive 1. Well, those are going to have a negative 1 in common. Remember we've said if you have a negative on your first term in a pair, you're going to take a negative out of both of them. So negative 1 times x would give me negative 1x, and negative 1 times negative 1 would give me a positive 1. So the negative 1 is what I factor out as their GCF, and x minus 1 is the binomial left behind. And notice, these both have an x minus 1. So I can factor out the x minus 1, which is their greatest common factor in the form of a binomial, and that leaves behind a 3x and a negative 1 to be their second binomial. And that's the factorization for that problem. All right, let's look at the problem off to the right. So as I look at this, I don't see a number in front of x squared. Remember, if I don't see a number, it means I have one of them. So when I go to set up my puzzle, I'm saying what multiplies to make 1 times 36, which is 36, and what adds to make negative 12. All right, before I go any further, I want you to push pause, try to do this problem all the way out on your own, and then when you're done, push play again when you're ready to check your work. Okay, compare your work to mine. You can push pause while you do that. And then I just want to talk for a sec about how we could write our final answer. If you write your answer as x minus 6 times x minus 6, that is totally fine. That's perfectly good for your final answer. But there is a slightly more sophisticated way you could write this answer. Notice that something times itself. And we know that when we multiply something by itself, the easiest way to say that is to say that we're going to square it. So instead of writing the x minus 6 out twice, you could instead say it's x minus 6 squared. All right, let's do the next problem. So we've got x squared plus 7x plus 10. All right, I want you to try it on your own. All the way from scratch, see if you can do it. So push pause, give it a try, and then play again when you're ready to check your work. All right, take a look. I did the problem two different ways because I don't know which order you might have thought of the two numbers. If you thought of the two numbers to split the middle term as 2 and 5, then you would have done it the way I did it up in green. If you thought of the two numbers as 5 and 2, then you would have set your work up the way I did it in pink. So just check whichever one matches. 
pause if you need to, to go through and check your work, and then we're going to go on to the next problem. So the last problem on the page is 2x squared plus 11x minus 6. I'm not going to do the problem in the video. I want you to try that one on your own after I get you started on how to set up the puzzle. Make sure you do the problem to the best of your ability so that when I check your work, I can see that you tried it. If it doesn't come out perfectly, of course I understand. We're still getting used to doing factoring, but I want you to try it all the way through, showing all the layers of the steps in order to get full credit. So let's talk about what the puzzle is going to be. 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. So I'm looking for two numbers that add to, uh, multiply to make negative 12 and add to make 11. So there's your head start on getting going with the puzzle. Give the problem your best shot and submit your work when you're finished.